thank you everybody for coming tonight to this. This is the first time that we've done a webinar like this. Normally they're really focused on our educational offerings, you know, showing you how to market your meat and that type of thing. But we wanted to try this tonight because recently we've had more interest in people wanting to get signed up for Chop Local. That means that we do a lot of one-on-one -on -one calls with people to talk through whether or not it's right for them. And we thought we would try this in a group setting this time to see if we can be a little bit more efficient because that I think is a goal for all of us in our businesses all the time. So tonight, the goal is really to show you how you can sell more meat online without hiring a marketing team. I'm guessing for a lot of you, this is maybe not the first time that you've thought about selling meat online. And you may have even gone so far as to set up a store online with another platform. So the first thing that I wanna mention right off the bat here is that if you've tried to sell meat online and it hasn't worked for you, that is not your fault, okay? There's a lot of information out there that can be really overwhelming. And there's a lot of things that you have to learn in order to sell meat online successfully. And that can be confusing. Many times that information overload, as well as all of the other things that you have going on on your farm or in your meat processing business, can make it really hard for you to manage all of this and make it hard for you to succeed. So if you found in the past, if you're concerned that in the past you've tried selling meat online and that hasn't worked for you, I just wanna put those fears to rest because we have discovered over the past few years that you can sell meat online successfully. You just need to have the right team and the right tools to make that happen. So how can we be so confident that this is possible? Well, every year we do a survey of farmers and butcher shops across the country, received over 300 responses from farmers, and that's what we're sharing here tonight. These numbers are from farmers, butcher shops, your numbers are gonna look a little bit different. But what we found from this survey was that farms selling their meat direct to consumer averaged about $74,000 of meat sales each year. If they are not selling online, this means they're selling at farmer's markets or to friends and family, Maybe they're taking messages, you know, Facebook messages or text messages to take orders. But if they don't have an e-commerce store, it's averaging $74,000 a year. You add e-commerce to the equation, that jumps up to over $100,000 a year. And then when we add e-commerce plus shipping, that number goes up to almost $150,000 a year. So farms selling their meat online and offering shipping are selling double what those farms that are just selling locally are selling every year. We also know from this survey that over 20% of the farm respondents were selling more than $200,000 a year. We saw responses 200, 250, 300, 500, up to $850,000 a year in meat sales. And that's all of their sales online and offline. And so we know that this is possible. But for a lot of you, I know you're probably sitting here thinking right now, I don't know that that 850 is ever really feasible for me. We know to make that happen, you need to work smarter, not harder, right? You need to be efficient, like I mentioned. And you probably need to build a great team of people around you. That person or that farm selling $850,000 in meat probably has a marketing person working for them. But that may not be feasible for you, but it is feasible for you to surround yourself with people that can help you and use a collaborative approach towards your meat sales. So let me give you an example of this. 25 years ago, well, over 25 years ago, it was 1996 here in Iowa, Lewis Rich decided to close the West Liberty, Iowa turkey processing plant. And that left about 140 turkey growers in the state with nowhere to send their turkey. So they were really faced with the probability of going broke. You know how hard it is to find poultry processing. And these were actually commercial growers who had already invested in barns and spent a lot of time and money into growing their turkey business. So what they decided to do was they decided to band together form a cooperative and actually purchase that turkey processing plant 
so that they could control their destiny into the future. And this plant became one of the leading turkey processors in the country and actually one of the leading lunch meat processors across the entire country, processing lunch meat for very big brands that you have probably eaten many times in your life. So these turkey farmers coming together to form this cooperative and purchase this plant really helped pave the way for wealth for not only their generation, but for the second and now even third generation for those turkey farmers as well. Uh, the CHOP local founder, Jared, who's not able to be here tonight because he's working on his farm, Jared's family was one of those families that was part of the Turkey Growers Cooperative. And my husband's family was actually one of those families that was part of the Turkey Growers Cooperative. So this showed us how collaboration between independent livestock producers could really create a lasting impact and have a huge impact on the meat supply chain. This collaborative approach is really one of the things that led Jared to come up with the idea of Chop Local. I wish that I could, I could take credit for Chop Local, but I can't. He came up with the idea himself. Uh, during the pandemic, while Iowa farmers struggled to get their animals to market, Consumers struggled to find meat in the grocery stores, and our small processors were trying to figure out how to get meat into those consumers' hands. Jared came up with this idea of, again, farmers and small processors working together collaboratively to create a nationwide farmer's market specifically for meat. He described it as the Etsy of meat. But if you're not familiar with Etsy, we've found that that farmer's market analogy or description really makes a lot of sense for farms and butcher shops that we talk to. So the way that that farmer's market works is it means that customers can come to choplocal.com as if they're coming to the farmer's market and browse the booths and look for the products that they're looking for or a farm or butcher shop, a vendor that really fits their needs. So they come to choplocal.com they can look at that vendor directory or they can search directly for a product, find the farm or butcher shop near them. Now, each of our vendors, like Kinfork brand is one of them, can also have a micro store, which is like their farmer's market booth online. And so they can send people straight from their website, from their social media, from their email marketing, straight to their online micro store so that they can send their customers right there and they can purchase directly from them as well. So it kind of works in both ways. We're going to go into a lot more detail about Chop Local tonight, but I want to take a second to introduce myself. My name is Katie Oltoff. I am a former teacher, also a former mommy blogger and a small business owner. So when um, I have a degree in elementary ed, when my husband and I were first married, we got, it was my first year teaching. I was also freshly pregnant with that boy that's about to be 16 and is about five inches taller than me now. And we got approached about building turkey barns as part of this cooperative. And so we went ahead and did that. I didn't grow up on a farm, so I learned a ton about agriculture in this time. And at that time, the pioneer woman, Ree Drummond, had started her blog and was starting to become popular. And I literally decided I wanted to be like Reed Drummond and have a blog. So I started blogging about agriculture, parenting, as well as DIY home improvement because we were fixing up a farmhouse that was 100 years old at that point. Um, so I started blogging. I learned all about how to write for the internet, how to take photos, how to drive traffic to my blog and use social media and that kind of thing. Quit my teaching job eventually, and then opened a small business rurally where I painted furniture and literally hauled junk out of old barns, washed it off and sold it to people as home decor or garden decor. Okay, so again, I learned all about digital marketing for a small business and what it takes to build a rapport online with your customers and social media, and that type of thing. Now, eventually it came time that I needed to get a full-time job again. And so I started working for ag organizations in the state. I worked 
for the Iowa Turkey Federation to start out with, and then settled at the Iowa Cattlemen's Association for about five years, where I was the director of communications. And so again, working with a farm audience and working on their digital um, media, their website, and that type of thing. And it was really during my time at the Iowa Cattlemen's Association that I became so much more aware of how meatpacker concentration and consolidation has really impacted our independent livestock producers across the country and our meat supply chain. So when the pandemic hit, I was still working at ICA. We actually hosted a webinar about selling our meat direct to consumer. I saw Jared pop on the webinar as an attendee and I was like, Jared has no beef. We're talking about selling beef. What is he doing? So I sent him a message. I found out about his idea for Chop Local and I just absolutely fell in love with it. And the rest is history, right? I wish it were that easy. Um, it took me a few months, but I did decide to quit my very stable job at the Iowa Cattlemen's Association that I loved in order to help Jared build Chop Local. That was almost four years ago. And now on our farmer's market platform, we have, um, I think around 70, I lose count sometimes, farms and butcher shops across the country. You can see all the states that we're in here. Uh, and then we've also worked with hundreds of farms and butcher shops through our annual survey, the webinars that we do, the new course that we launch, the events that we've gone to. And so we've really had the opportunity to figure out what works in selling meat online and we love to be able to share that with farms and shops like you. So keys to a successful online meat store. This is what we have learned over time based on our experience. You need an easy to use platform that works with your lifestyle and is not super technologically advanced. And you need conversion rate optimization. This means that we are taking people who are browsing your online store or checking it out for the first time and we are turning them into buyers. You need consistent, effective marketing and you need an effective team or an experienced team to help you out. And I think that's one of the most important things that we continue to get feedback on from our current vendors is that our team has been really, really helpful for them. And as farmers ourselves, that has been something that we really pride ourselves on. So in just a minute, Sydney's gonna go through all of our features and what this all means, but we'll run through this again real quickly. An easy to use platform that makes it simple for you to organize your meat business, and makes it easy for you to contact your customers. You can use it on your computer or we have farmers that are using it straight off of their cell phone every day. We've also, she's gonna share about conversion rate optimization. And again, this means we're taking those browsers, the people that are just looking at your store and we are turning them into buyers. This is something that we've really focused on and it's something that we think sets us apart from some of the other platforms that are specifically for farmers out there. Later, I'm gonna walk you through a little bit more about what Chop Local does for marketing for our, you know, as a farmer's market ourselves, we are always doing events and promotions to bring more customers in. And then, as I mentioned, that team is really important. So at this point, I'm gonna turn this over to my teammate, Sydney Hadachek. Okay, thank you, Katie. Um, like she said, my name is Sydney, um, and I have had the privilege of working with farmers on Chop Local for a little over a year now. Um, so I actually did grow up on a farm here in Iowa. Um, my family raises Black Angus cattle, and so that's really where my passion for ag started. Um, and then I came out to central Iowa. I originally grew up in eastern Iowa and came out here to Iowa State University and got a degree in agricultural communications. Throughout my time in college, I worked for a few different ag organizations and ironically um, worked for the Beef Industry Council and met Katie kind of through that experience. So it's just funny how um, life comes full circle and now we get to work together full time. Um, and then after that, I also worked in higher education at Iowa State, um, helping students learn what path is best for them and how they can have a successful experience. So 
all of those things tied together have really helped me understand how to work with farmers and help them be successful. Okay, so we're not sure if this is the perfect place for this slide, but I think it's good for you to know that before we cover all the tools and what our vendor really interface looks like, this is how we get started. And we want to emphasize that throughout this process, getting both getting started and then also as you start to sell online, we will be with you every step of the way. So obviously, the first thing that you will do is make your official commitment. We have both monthly and annual plans available, and we will briefly touch on those, but just a little bit later. Then we'll have you fill out our vendor information form, provide us with your products, um, photos from your farm or your butcher shop, and also maybe your family. And then I will go ahead and take all of those things and put them together to create your micro store. Um, once I have done that, I will meet with you one-on-one -on -one in an onboarding call where we will walk through um, I'll show you these tools next, but we'll walk through them again so that you feel comfortable as we launch your store in running that online store um, and also using the features that we have. So let's go ahead and get into some of those. Um, and we will, um, as we go through those, Oh, sorry, I forgot about this part. Um, so one thing we do like to mention is that, you know, it can be a little overwhelming as you are getting started. And so likely some of you have heard of our Meet Commerce Essentials course. And one of the perks of becoming a Chop Local vendor is that you get access to this course for free. It's a $497 value, but we truly believe it is what can set you up for success in the e-commerce world. Um, and obviously we will be there to to help you, but these lessons within this course um, really reinforce all of the things that we believe it takes to be successful. And so this is something else that we will be provided to you um, at no cost to you once you become a CHOP local vendor. In addition to that, um, we also have tons of free resources that are available to anybody, but we do want to, again, emphasize that these are always at your disposal. So um, like tonight, we have all of our other webinars recorded and posted on our YouTube page. And then in addition to that, um, we have a blog with tons of helpful tips um, at choplocaluniversity.com. Okay, so now, sorry, I got a little ahead of myself there. Now let's get into kind of the vendor tools in the interface. So the first thing we're going to start with is the product page. Obviously, you can see a screenshot here from one of our vendors. Um, and we wanted to point out a few things that make this vendor interface so easy to use. So that first column that you see there is simple inventory management. So right away, you can tell that it's really easy easy to manage your inventory and look at everything all at once. The next column um, right there is a, a pretty new feature, but one that we think is really helpful, and that is easily rearranging your product position. So this is great if you maybe sell a lot of different types of products and you want to organize them into different categories. So you want to put maybe all of your beef together and all of your chicken and all of your pork all in different categories. That's a great way to do that. Another way that we see vendors using this is maybe if they are featuring a product or they're running a sale, maybe they'll rearrange those, put them on top so they're super easy for customers um, to find. So another good feature right there on that product page. The last column that we have highlighted is managing your product visibility. So this is a great way to turn your products kind of on and off. Um, that's how I would describe it. So maybe if you're out of inventory on a specific product, you might just disable that for the time being to kind of clean up your store. Um, and then it's super easy to just go back in and turn them right on. Okay, next slide. So what we're looking at here is if you were to click on any of those products that we were just looking at, we have a more in-depth product page. Now you can see um, the first thing, or not the first thing there, um, but the product description. It is super easy for you to add or edit descriptions. Um, when I set up your store, I will add your descriptions in, but if there's ever anything that you want to add or change, it's really easy to go right in and do that. 
We'll continue to touch on conversion rate optimization, but I do want to point out here what a great product description this is. It starts off with a mouth-watering description of what the product is, but then it also talks about the weight of the package, and then the vendor also provides some um, recipe ideas. So those are all really great things to include when we're talking about increasing your conversion rate. Moving down a little bit, you can see two product photos. So we allow up to three photos. Um, we think two to three photos per product is best. Um, so always including both a raw and a cooked photo is a good way to go. Um, I mentioned inventory earlier on that slide before this, but you can also edit the inventory within the product page as well. The next thing we're going to talk about is pricing and sales. So I highlighted two boxes here, and you'll notice that the price is showing up twice. I rhymed there. That's neat. <laughs> so if you want to run your own sale, we have designed this page to make it really easy to go ahead and do so. So the first price you see there um, is just called the price. And then if you jump down, that is the list price or the MSRP. So what you're going to do if you want to run a sale is just adjust the price. Um, and then if you go to the next slide, you'll be able to see how that shows on the customer end. So we have lots of different stickers to make it really evident to customers um, when you're running a sale to help convince them to make a purchase. The smaller screenshot you see down there in the right hand corner is also from the micro store. So not only do, do the stickers pop up in the product page, but also on the front side of the micro store as well. So again, those sorts of features really help increase conversion rate and encourage your customers to purchase. Okay, another thing we're going to talk about a lot is search engine optimization. So really, um, we go super in depth in this in another webinar that we did. Um, but what this does is help people find your products. So um, this is just another tab on your product pages that helps you um, add keywords that make your products discoverable, basically. We won't go too much into depth there because I know it can be a really tricky subject. Okay, another thing that we do maybe a little bit differently than some other platforms is we sell by weight ranges rather than by um, price per pound or exact weight pricing. Um, and so when we talk about this, you know, some people say, well, I have to do exact weight pricing because that's what customers are used to at the grocery store. And while we do understand um, what they're saying there, what we actually find is that Customers are comparing their shopping experience on your online store to other online shopping experiences, not necessarily their experience at the grocery store. And to break that down a little further, what we mean is that when they click checkout, they want to know exactly what they're paying for. With exact weight pricing, that's not possible. And so this method helps remove some of that uncertainty and concern when they hit the checkout button. From the vendor's back end, um, this is kind of what it looks like. So you, uh, and under that general button that you can see, that was where I showed you the descriptions, the pricing, the inventory, all that sort of thing. But if we move over to the variations, you can see all the different weight variations that are offered here on this porterhouse steak. Um, you can, again, adjust the price and the inventory from here as well, um, and that makes it really easy to adjust those things within the product itself. Uh, we also note here that so we recommend doing a little bit larger increments for things like roasts, bigger cuts, and then for things like filet, um, you can do smaller increments. But it's all up to you however you want to break that down um, and set your pricing. From the customer side, this is how it's going to show up. They'll just be able to click that weight drop down and select the variation that they like. Um, and as a note to this, it's not related to weight, but we can add those sorts of variations to really anything that it applies to. So the first thing that comes to mind for me is flavor variations. So if you have something like beef sticks or patties or brats that have different flavors, um, we can add variations for those as well. 
All right, let's talk about shipping and pickup methods. So our platform allows for you to have multiple pickup and delivery um, methods available. One of the things that Katie briefly touched on before is that a lot of farmers and butcher shops that are sell, not necessarily for butcher shops, but for farmers specifically, um, they sell through lots of different channels, not just online. And because of that, it's really important to have different methods available for people um, to be able to get their products. Because we know there's lots of local customers, but there's also customers that need their products shipped to them. So you can see a good example here of one of our vendors down in Arizona. One of the things that she does is she's super active with farmers markets down there. So one of her methods is delivering to those farmer mar farmers markets. Next, we have a pickup method from her farm. And then lastly, we obviously have shipping from her farm. With her pickup method, she does have a um, pickup discount available, and we'll talk about that in a second. But I do want to touch on um, our shipping regions are predetermined. And one of the other things we offer with shipping is an integration with ShipStation, which is just one of the ways that we help you save on shipping costs. Okay, so moving on to the next slide. You can see here from the customer checkout page, the customer will be able to see what options are available to them. So let's say they went ahead and picked the pickup method. Um, you can also adjust the description. So she says pickup can be arranged, arrangements will be made once order is placed. Now this vendor offers a 10% pickup discount. And the reason she does this, we'll touch a little bit on shipping later, is because we encourage our vendors to incorporate their shipping expenses into their prices so that it's not an additional fee when the customer goes to checkout. Now, to help avoid this fee for your local customers, that is why they offer a pickup discount. We see um, vendors offer those anywhere between 10 and 20%, and you can see how that applies automatically here. All right, another great um, tool that we offer is our customer message center. This is a great way to get better at customer service is having all of your messages and communication in one place. We see tons of questions come across Chop Local every day. Um, anything from how the product was raised to when their product will be shipped, how shipping works for the farm or butcher shop. And so being able to have that all in one place so that you can respond quickly is a really great feature that we offer. Um, it's also a good way for you as a vendor to be able to communicate with that customer, tell them, hey, I shipped your package out today. It should be there, you know, in a day or two. Here is your um, confirmation number. Um, really, it's a great way for them to communicate with you and then vice versa. Okay, subscriptions. This is another thing that we get questions on all the time. And yes, we do offer them. We won't go too in depth on how that works on the back end, um, but you can offer flat uh, discounts like you see here. You can also offer discounts by the percentage. Um, and really, uh, anything that you think you want to offer with, with a subscription, we have kind of tried it all. So these are available as well. Okay, so we keep talking about conversion rate optimization. Let's dive into that a little deeper as it relates to shipping. So I talked a few slides ago about not having those extra shipping fees at checkout. What you can see here is that the number one reason shipper shoppers abandon their cart at checkout is because the extra costs were too high. So um, probably the biggest one that I can think of there is the shipping cost, but also anything like credit card fees or delivery fees, all those sorts of things um, are kind of scary to customers when they hit the checkout um, cart. And so avoiding those sorts of things is really important to getting them to make that final purchase. Now we know that shipping isn't free, but the way that we make it free, quote unquote, um, is by again, incorporating those into your pricing. Now you're wondering, well, do I have to do free shipping? Um, and we think that yes, it is important to be able to offer that at a certain th at a certain threshold. Um, what you can see is that 66% of consumers expect free shipping for all online orders. 
Now, while that isn't necessarily possible, um, we do offer free shipping to customers on orders over $50. And because we're not going to have you cover that entire cost, um, Chop Local helps you with that. We provide um, our vendors with a reimbursement on those orders that are over $50. Okay, let's dive a little bit deeper again into this conversion rate optimization thing and what you can do to help increase that. So the first thing here is having mouth-watering photos. Um, there is a lot of times that we will look at a farmer's online store and either maybe they don't have pictures at all, or it might just be the picture of the product like in the packaging. And while that's great because it provides the customer with a realistic idea of what the product looks like, it's obviously not the most enticing photo. So while you can use it, we don't ever encourage using it as the main photo. We recommend two to three photos per product, always doing a raw photo and a cooked photo. And then the third one is kind of up to you. As far as product descriptions go, we encourage you to start off with something mouthwatering that really makes the customer want to purchase that product. You also need to be um, including how many there are per package, the weight of the package, thickness, bone-in or boneless, if that applies to the specific product. Any questions that a customer might have about a product, you need to be including those details in the descriptions. And you can see that here on one of our vendors' descriptions. We also help you um, make sure that those are all uploaded um, and so that your product pages look the best that they can. Other um, information that we include on our vendors' product pages, uh, we have a little tab you can see here about their farm. Um, this is just a screenshot, so we can't click into each of these. Then we have another tab about shipping and how that works for this specific vendor. And then we also have reviews. Once you scroll down a little bit on the page, you can also see a little scrolling tab that says you might be interested in. And again, this helps encourage the customer to make other purchases and continue shopping on your store. Okay, I briefly mentioned reviews, but this is another huge thing that we want you to have prominently displayed on your store, and we have made that easy with um, the CHOP local micro stores. So again, um, you can see here on the product page uh, right under, like right next to the description, there is the reviews tab. And then on your micro store home as well, we provide your reviews too. Um, so making those as prominent as possible so that customers can see, hey, other people are purchasing from this store, I should too. Okay, Katie. Okay, awesome, Sydney. You covered a ton of information in a very short amount of time. And there are more features and things like that. Um, but that's just kind of give you an overview of what it looks like on the back side, as well as what it looks like on the front side for your customers. Now, one of the questions that we always get asked is what makes Chop Local different from the other platforms that are out there and the other platforms for farmers? And this is what we found works really well to explain it. When you set up your website and your online store on another platform, it is like having a roadside stand for your farm, right? You have to get the customers there. They may not be able to find it. It may not be in a well-trafficked area, and it can be really hard to increase your meat sales that way. But when you're part of Chop Local, it's like being part of a really popular farmer's market that is helping you, providing you with support, helping you with marketing and promotions. And so that's one of the ways that we really compare that. Now, if we want to get a little bit deeper into what Top Local's marketing looks like, these are kind of our basic principles with our marketing. One of them is that we stay really positive, okay? So we are not disparaging any types of farms or farm production practices or anything like that. We really want to celebrate our farmers, our vendors, our butcher shops, and stay really positive in our marketing. Along with that, we put our vendors out front because we know that people want to know the the people behind their food. And we know that honestly, anytime we can show the faces of our vendors, it's gonna go over really, really well with our customers. We also really believe in working smarter, not harder. So we have worked on marketing techniques that 
draw in customers that are already interested in purchasing locally or purchasing directly from a farmer or butcher shop. These marketing techniques are things like search engine optimization. So when they are searching for the word local meat or butcher shops near me, Chop Local is coming up in that search, okay? It's also things um, like email marketing, where we have a sequence of emails that when they sign up for our email, they automatically get a sequence of emails that helps nurture them to become buyers. And then the last thing here is that we wanna use our marketing dollars to benefit our customers and vendors whenever we can. That's why we run these sales and promotions. We know that we could pump a lot more money into ads, into Facebook and Google, which we do use those as ads, but we know that when we run a sale or a promotion, it gets customers to purchase and it moves local meat. And honestly, at the end of the day, our goal is to make it easier to buy and sell local meat online. And so running these sales and promotions just really makes sense for us. We get a little bit more specific. I mentioned our email marketing. In addition to the welcome sequence, we also send out emails about sales and promotions. We send out emails that feature special products or seasonal products. And um, we like to feature our vendors. We have a bunch of different email campaigns that go out all the time. We, of course, use social media, primarily Facebook and Instagram. SEO stands for search engine optimization. And I mentioned that that's when somebody Googles something related to local meat or a specific product. We're working to get our website to the top and oftentimes it is at the top. Search engine marketing is a little bit different. Those are your Google ads, okay? And Google shopping ads are relatively new for us. We launched them in the second half of 2023. And right now we're averaging about a million impressions every month on our Google Shopping ads. So our vendors' products are showing up in Google Shopping that scrolls across the top when you are Googling meat products. CRO, conversion rate optimization, Sydney's talked a lot about that. That is a key part of marketing and it's part of our work smarter, not harder. And then, like I said, the sales and promotions. We know that there are some people who still consider buying meat online to be a little bit risky, right? But if you give them that discount, they will, it removes some of the risk and it makes it easier for them to take that step and make that purchase. The other thing that we think makes Chop Local difference is our team. We know that there are other software companies out there that have a tech background and they're hiring a lot of young people that type of thing. Our team is all made up of farmers who have been where you have been, okay? We know what it's like. Right now, my kids are at grandma's house because my husband is still out on the farm because the weather is nice. So like, we know what your lifestyle is like. We know what you're talking about when you're talking about meat and selling, you know, carcasses or harvesting, processing, that type of thing. And we hear continually, It's hard, this always feels awkward because I feel like we're bragging about ourselves, but we hear continually from our vendors that this is one of the things that they really appreciate about Chop Local is our team. So now we're going to talk a little bit about your, your farmer butcher shop and how it might fit into Chop Local. We obviously think that Chop Local is a great solution, but it's not the right solution for everybody. So. Your farm or butcher shop is a good fit for Chop Local if you are primarily selling USDA or CIS inspected retail cuts of meat or seafood. We do allow other products on Chop Local as long as your main product is retail cuts of meat. You do not have another online store, or maybe you'd like to switch from your current online store to Chop Local. Um, this example that that we have on the slide here, Over the Moon Meats had a Shopify store, Shopify or Squarespace, I can't remember now, um, but they recently switched to Chop Local as a way to boost their meat sales. And in the first three months that they were on Chop Local, they saw their meat sales 50% higher than they were the previous year in that same period. If you are ready to ship your products, because we are doing marketing nationwide, our vendors are shipping products. 
Now, Sydney mentioned the educational resources. Shipping is part of our course. We also have a mini course on shipping. And so if you are not shipping yet, but you're thinking about it, we encourage you to look at those resources first to determine if that is something that fits into your business. We also are looking for vendors who have positive feedback and reviews from your current customers. You don't have to have been in business for a long time, but you should know that you have high quality meat and you should have some positive feedback because that means that you are headed in the right direction to have a successful meat business. And we wanna be able to feature those reviews on Chop Local. We can take your Facebook, Google reviews and things like that and actually load them onto your micro store on the back end. That's something that we can do as a team. Our vendors can't do that themselves, but we can do that for them to help get the word out about how great their meat is. And then, like I mentioned earlier, our marketing is really positive, and that's what we expect from our vendors, too, that you have positive marketing that's not disparaging other farms, products, or practices. And then, of course, we've got this piece of it, right? So if your farm or butcher shop meets all the previous criteria and a monthly fee of $69 to $129 plus a 1.5% commission fits into your marketing budget, then we might be a really good fit for you. Now, before we wrap things up and turn it over to questions, I wanna address something that's kind of always hanging over our heads. The major meat packers and retailers think that they have the market cornered on the meat supply chain in the United States. They think that they're the most meaningful part of that meat supply chain, but we know that they are wrong, right? They want you to think that the impact that you have is not significant. But we know that the impact that your business has on your farm, your family, your community, your downtown area, Teresa can talk about that later, is huge. Um, even if it feels like the major meat supply chain commodity, you know, the major meat commodity supply chain players are rooting for you to fail, it might be true because they don't have any interest in seeing you succeed. They don't benefit from seeing you succeed. But we know that you guys make an impact. We know that what you do is really important. And the difference with us is that we really truly do care about seeing you succeed. I mentioned earlier that our mission is to make it easier to buy and sell local meat. And we work to do that every single day with all of you. And we know that it's possible. We know. I mentioned earlier the West Liberty food story. We saw 40 farmers come together in Iowa and literally change the meat supply chain for Turkey in the United States. We know that this is possible. And we know from working with our farms and butcher shops across the country that there are people out there doing it every single day. So here's a few of our vendors, and I'm just going to tell you a little bit about each of them to see if maybe you can see similarities, see yourself in these farms and shops. This is Dalton Farms, one of our newer vendors from Wakeman, Ohio. They have a little meat shop on their property. They call it the Meat Barn. It's open just a few hours a week. Like I wanna say less than 10 hours a week that it's open. And they are selling over 400 steers a year direct to consumer off of their farm and other farms products that they've brought into their shop as well. We've got Kinfork in Pennsylvania. Kinfork is a cooperative of Amish farmers that built their own processing facility and are now selling their beef and their cheese as well as they recently launched lamb as well. So another great example of collaboration together to control their marketing. White Barn Beef is on the New Mexico Arizona border. They actually recently switched from another online platform that was built for farmers, but they felt like they weren't getting the support and the tools and the customers weren't getting the experience that they needed. So White Barn on the Arizona New Mexico border, you border, you could throw a rock into Mexico. They're doing several farmers markets like Sydney mentioned earlier, um, and they're selling Wagyu beef all across the western part of the south southwest and western part of the United States via Chop Local. Over the Moon Meat and Flowers, we mentioned them earlier too. They're the ones that switched from Squarespace or Shopify. They are an Iowa farm couple who is really making a living off of the farm completely. 
selling their pork, their chicken, they've got duck and turkey, as well as flowers. They don't sell their flowers on Chop Local, but they're selling all their other meats on Chop Local as well. Twisted Horn Cattle Company, this is um, a ranch in Petaluma, California. Sydney and I actually got to visit it recently when we were invited to be speakers at a conference in California. Um, Twisted Horn, these are two brothers, Jack and Asa, who grew up in beef production. They're third generation. Their grandpa came from Portugal and raised uh, and had a dairy out in California, but their dad raises beef. But these guys bought their own registered herd of longhorns and are now raising grass finished beef uh, north of San Francisco. And I just love this. These kids are 18 and 20 years old and they bought this two years ago. It just blows my mind. And honestly, like we are so honored to be able to help them build their business. It gives me goosebumps. Okay. Might get a little teary eyed too. Okay. Klein Smokehouse. Here's another brother set, Clayton and Colt. Clayton and Cole, I think. Um, this is down in Texas. They have a processing facility. They do a lot of deer processing, but they make these specialty um, sm smoked sausage products that they are selling on Chop Local and now reaching a much wider audience that way. And last but not least, Teresa Davis is one of our favorite vendors. Uh, Teresa owns West 40 Market here right outside of Des Moines, Iowa in a suburb. And she is here tonight to tell us a little bit about her experience with Chop Local, as well as help us answer any questions that you might have. So I'm gonna flip to the next slide that has more information on it. And then I think we'll turn it over to Teresa to give a little bit of her story. Okay, go for it, Teresa. Oh gosh, on the spot here, okay. Um, yeah, so I've been with Chop Local for a little over a year. Um, as Katie mentioned, I do have a storefront, a retail store here in Ankeny, Iowa, which is um, just right outside of Des Moines. Um, and so I started that uh, almost three years ago and started with just a couple of local farms, my family farm included, um, selling individual cuts of beef, pork, chicken, bison, lamb, and turkey. And so um, it's kind of grown over the last couple of years to be... Um, uh, sourcing from about seven to eight Iowa farmers, depending on the time of year. Um, we've grown our business quite a bit over that time. Um, and a huge portion of that is, I think, thanks to the online piece with Chop Local. Um, the uniqueness that that I kind of have, too, is the fact that I utilize the online platform a lot for my customers here locally to be able to shop online just for from a convenience standpoint. Um, and to be able to pick it up either in store or we offer um, delivery, local delivery as well, too. So in the world where everything is crazy busy and a lot of people just don't have time um, and they love the convenience of online shopping, I am able to utilize that um, and really cater to my customers a lot more with utilizing the Chop Local platform. Um, and of course, we ship all over the United States, too, but um, a lot of our local folks really appreciate the online access. And so um, I, I would say I think maybe I'm here today because I'm a huge advocate of Chop Local. I drug my feet for um, a solid year, at least. I will proudly say that. <laughs> um, Katie and I had many conversations um, before I finally joined Chop Local. And honestly, I just needed to make sure it was the right fit for me. And I was still kind of trying to figure out my business. Um, but I love to have my hand held. I, any partner that I have with my business, my accountant, my tax person, my banker, my everything, they all know that they have to just, they have to be ready just to coddle me and hold my hand. And, um, I found that <laughs> with, uh, Katie and the team here, um, as they will know, I probably bugged them a little bit more than I probably should, but, um, but I, I think that that's really important when you're not only building your business, but, um, you know, growing. And, um, I, I think that Katie and the team here at Chop Local really do that. And the platform itself is fantastic. Um, and there's just, even in the last little about a little over a year that I've been a part of them, um, the platform itself has grown a lot too. So they've added a lot of really cool, um, features to it that allow it just to be an easier thing for our customers to, to shop from and to utilize. And also easier for us on this end to adjust our inventory and move stuff around in our own store and, um, and so while they do a bulk of the work, especially to set it up for us, I think that they make it very easy for us to um, control it on our end as well, too, if, if we want to do that. So, um, yeah, so I, I'm happy to answer any questions um, here. I'm also happy to answer any questions offline, too. So um, we have our Facebook and Instagram page, West 40 Market, all spelled out. So you guys can find me there or um, I don't know if Katie and Sydney will send out the information afterwards, but you're welcome to 
email me or reach out to if you have any questions um, or want to just talk through what this might look like for you. Okay, thank you, Teresa. Um, we do have a few questions come in. So let me see here. For one of the questions is for farmers market pickup, can customers select a date? So we don't have that really set up. But what you can do is you can list the next few dates that you're going to be at the farmer's market. And it's so easy to communicate back and forth with customers that then you can arrange that. Would you agree, Teresa? You do a lot of messaging in our message center. And does that work pretty well for you? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's an important piece is really keeping in touch with your customers and making sure that um, that that the communication is crystal clear. I have customers, too, in the order form when they place their order, there is a spot for the customer to add a note. Um, or ask a question. So I've had customers kind of clarify some things in there too. So um, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, the next question is the processor that they're using right now is not USDA or on the CIS list. What process is required to get the processor on CIS? So CIS stands for Cooperative Interstate Shipment, and it is an option in states where there is a state inspection program, which is not every state. Um, the state first has to apply to be to be part of the CIS program. Then they have to put the rules and regulations all in place to make sure that their state inspection for CIS is at least as stringent as what the federal guidelines are. And then the processor has to go through the process to become CIS inspected and meet all those regulations. So it can be kind of a lengthy process. I want to say that over the whole thing for Iowa to become part of CIS and then for the first processors to become CIS inspected was probably a at least 18 months, maybe two year process. Um, and the first step is really, does your state have the state inspection program? Is it part of CIS? And then does the processor want to go further with that? Um, so that's kind of how that works. I hope that that it, meat regulations are clear as mud and it's different from state to state. We had a big discussion about that at a conference Sydney and I presented at on Saturday, different from the one we were at in California. But um, it's very confusing. It's very difficult. We wish that they would make it easier to sell local meat, right? So um, another question regarding shipping. Does the software determine how much product can fit into a single shipment box and if additional boxes are necessary? No, that's really... Um, so our average order online for shipping is, a, is around $150. Okay, so you think about what $150 looks like for your meat and see what kind of box that will fit in. Every once in a while, someone will order more meat that, you know, you can put up to 40 pounds-ish in one box, depending on the size of your box. Um, we don't recommend that you ship more than what your UPS guy can carry comfortably because then it starts to get beat up. A little bit okay but you can put about 40 pounds into it which if you start to think about what that order value looks like it gets pretty big now we do have farms that will ship like kin fork that we mentioned earlier will ship an entire quarter or half of beef or a whole beef but they've got they know that it's going to take them four or five boxes and they've got that all built into their price they do a flat price for their calves and holes and they've got that built into their price, knowing that they're going to need that many boxes. So I hope that that answered the question. And um, we also integrate with a shipping service called ShipStation that gets you really steep discounts on your shipping, which is really helpful as well. Your top local orders go straight into ShipStation. It verifies the address. It's really kind of a slick system. So um, another question. Are the practice claims like antibiotic-free, grass-fed, grain-fed, et cetera, verified by a third party? And they are typically not. Um, we require that our vendors follow the same labeling rules that USDA and FSIS have in place for those types of claims. And in our vendor agreement, we specify that we, we are not compliance officers. We are not going to verify it. But if we were, if we asked for documentation, you would be expected to provide it. Um, so far with our farms and vendors that we're working with, you know, 
it's a small enough group. Sydney and I know them. We talk to each of them. There's a little bit of an informal vetting process. And if we, there have been a couple of times where we didn't feel like a farm was a good fit. And so we didn't allow them on Chop Local. Um, there have been a, and so we kind of go through that process to make sure that we feel really comfortable with our farms and butcher shops because we need everybody to provide a great experience in order for this collaborative marketing to work the way that we want it to. Let's see, another question. How do you handle refunds if something shows up thawed after shipping? So this is really kind of on a case by case basis. There are times when Chop Local covers it. Um, and most of the time that's when we feel like it's a belligerent customer who, you know, maybe isn't completely being honest in their claims. We don't like to push that onto our vendors. Um, we like to just take care of that for you guys. There are other times when we have the vendor cover it if it really seems like the package was not properly, um, you know, if it wasn't packed properly and it's vendor error, then we would expect the vendor to cover it. But there have been times where we cover it as well. So it's really case by case. Um, every once in a while, it's not very often, but every once in a while, it's the shipping company's fault. And then the vendor usually works with the, the shipping company to resolve that. So. Let's see. One of the questions, we have this come up a lot. One of the questions is regarding chicken. Chicken poultry processing is a huge challenge. Um, and I know that the person asking this question is from Iowa. There's actually a task force in Iowa right now to work on poultry processing led by another Iowa turkey farmer. And Jared is on that committee as well. Um, there is an poultry exemption where in Iowa you can process up to a thousand birds on the farm but those could only be marketed in the state of Iowa and so the question is could those be sold on chop local but with a restriction to only the state of Iowa the answer is yes we have products um, that can only like Teresa you have some products for example that you don't offer for shipping can you tell them a little bit about how that works yeah, so I have um, mostly it's just my bigger bulk um, cuts. So like the entire brisket, um, some of the things that I know of that are much heavier that really have a hard time fitting in a standard box that I use or a standard cooler that I use to ship with. Um, and also like my bigger bundles. Um, I know that Katie mentioned earlier that there are farms that do ship like quarters and half beef. I choose not to. Um, I sell quite a few of those here in store and I have the retail store. So um, I set restrictions on those items on my um, Chop Local page. And so that was one of the tabs across the top, um, like where you saw the SEO and the variations and things like that. There's a restrictions tab. And so you can choose on every single item, you can choose whether you want that item to be able to be shipped for, you know, and pick up or delivery or whatever your, your um, sources of getting the item to the customer is, or you can be specific with different items. Eggs is another example. I sell eggs in the store. And so because I utilize my Chop Local platform, um, a lot for local customers that pick up in store. I have items like eggs that I do have on Shop Local for people to purchase, but they are pickup only. So um, my restriction for that then, of course, would be you can't ship it, um, and I don't deliver those either. So thank you. Okay. Um, another question: Is there a mechanism for bulk orders, like taking deposits for a quarter or half of beef? Yes. We didn't really touch on that, but we do want you to offer retail cuts, but most of our vendors are also offer, um, you know, quarter of beef, half a hog, that type of thing. You can take a deposit, they can pay that deposit, and then that opens up the chain of communication where you can message them back and forth. You can actually invoice them for the final amount straight through Chop Local, send them a link to pay. This also works really well with wholesale customers where you can invoice them a custom amount and they can pay through Chop Local as well. You can also just start that communication with them after they place the deposit. And if you wanna take payment in another way, that's completely fine too. You know, We are not going to go back and be like, oh gosh, she took a deposit, but we never saw that final payment come through. That is on you as the vendor, okay? Um, oh, I clicked the wrong button there. Sorry. And then a question, could I use Chop Local to replace my point of sale system? 
I'll let Teresa talk about point of sale too, but we do have, typically not, I will say that, we don't have a point of sale system. We do have a couple of vendors that use the backside of Chop Local as a point of sale system though, okay? So it is possible, it's not as user-friendly as a, as a real point of sale system, it is possible. Teresa, you use a separate point of sale system, right? And can you talk about how you manage inventory between your online store and your point of sale? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I do, I use a different point of sale system for my store, um, here, my retail store versus the online. Um, I, I have to keep up on my inventory pretty darn closely. And I am, I will say I'm conservative with my online inventory. Um, if I know something is pretty low in the store or it's an item that moves really fast, I won't set a very high inventory on that with my online. Um, and it is just an exercise that I do um, on at least a weekly basis. So when we bring meat back from the locker and we stock the shelves here, I, that's just one of my processes is I go onto my online store and I update inventory from that standpoint. So there isn't anything um, that allows them to communicate with each other. It is just kind of me making sure that I'm keeping tabs on everything um, within that. I will say to Katie's point, there have been times, um, there is a way that you can send basically push invoices to customers through Chop Local. Um, and I think that's what you're referring to, Katie, um, to be able to do that. So I've done it a handful of times um, when there's sales online. And especially if I have like maybe an older customer come into the store and they're like, I want the deal. And I know it's an only an online deal and not your in-store deal. Um, we will, I will set them up with an account on shop local. I will add items to their, to their basket and I will push them an invoice that they literally just have to click a button and pay for it then. And then that way that it processes through shop local and it follows then the, the sequence of events. Or if I have people that want, um, to maybe send something, a gift to somebody or something like that, and they want to ship it, I will set them up with an invoice and through shop local so that the shipping is included in all of that and push it through that way for them. So. Um, there have been a handful of instances that, that I, that I do that, but, um, for the most part, I just keep pretty close tabs on inventory in store and online. I also, um, am starting to, this is a little bit newer for me, but I'm starting to have a separate, um, set of inventory that is online specific. In other words, um, I have multiple freezers here with my inventory, right? So I am dedicating a couple of freezers that are just online only inventory freezers, um, and that way it is, as I kind of grow, it's a lot easier for me to really keep tabs um, on what I have for inventory completely set aside for my online stuff. Um, and then if I have to pull from my in-store inventory to replenish my online inventory, it's a little bit easier to manage that on um, kind of behind the scenes on the back end for me too. So that's a little bit of a new approach. Um, I don't have a whole lot to speak to because I haven't really um, used it for a, a very long time here, but that's kind of um, something I'm I'm testing out, so. Okay. Well, we have come to the end of our questions. There's just a couple of compliments in the question box. I don't need to read those out loud, right? But we do appreciate hearing that those from our um, our viewers, our attendees here tonight. And we thank you for coming. If you have more questions, please reach out to Sydney or I. We would be happy to meet with you one on one and talk about Chop Local, and. Um, be happy to figure out a way that we can serve you. We mentioned already that we do have the course that's available. So if the Chop Local platform isn't a great fit for you, but you still want to, you know, stay in touch, see Sydney and I on the big screen a few more times, you can check out the Chop Local course. We also have the shipping course. And Sydney told me I'm not allowed to mention this yet, but I'm going to do it anyway. Jared and I decided we were overruling her. Within the next few months, in 2024, we are going to be launching group coaching for our vendors so that we can walk them through marketing techniques, help them have kind of an accountability group that will help them um, learn about meat marketing as well as work on seasonal promotions. You know, holiday sales are huge. Teresa can attest to that because she was on our, our um webinar about that last fall. And that's something that Sydney and I met with a lot of vendors one-on-one -on -one to help coach them through how they could improve their holiday sales. We're thinking this year, we're going to work smarter, not harder, do a group coaching system and get that in place. So we'll also cover things like techniques for farmer's market, how to get your farmer's market customers onto your email list so that then you can later sell to them online in the off season. We'll talk about email marketing. That's something that we have really been focusing a lot more on. And I'm not sure if we remembered to mention, 
but Chop Local does integrate with MailChimp for your email marketing. So that is another great tool there. Um, and talk about, you know, social media, pricing, shipping, all of these things that are on your mind that you know are important to marketing and improving your meat business, but you need that team again. You need to surround yourself with that team to help you do it. So if there are any other questions, again, please let us know. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you to Teresa for being here. And uh, we wish you all the best in your meat marketing.